What's going on, Emily? How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? No complaints. Welcome to the summit. I, um, as I'm doing all these recordings, of course, you know, ahead of time, I'm not quite sure exactly yet of who is speaking when. So I'm like, okay, great. That last speaker was great, but I have no idea who the last person was. Uh, right. So you're going to sure be somewhere in the it. day. <laughs> I'm sure they did a great job. Good job, previous speaker. Previous speaker, generic previous speaker compliment. Here we go. <laughs> all right. Yeah. <laughs> But um, how are you doing? How, how is Emily, the human being? How are you doing today? Have you checked in with yourself today? Like, what's going on in your world today? First off, thank you for asking. It's so nice to have somebody ask, like, hey, how, how are you really doing? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? good, good. Um, I think it's just really nice. I think right now that's a question that we could probably ask a lot of our friends and family because I think we're all kind of, we know that we're all in it together, but, like, like when's the last time you actually stopped and asked somebody, like, hey, how are you actually doing with all of this? You know, because it's yeah. a lot to handle. It's a lot of changes. Um, so I personally, I'm doing really well. I live in Los Angeles, California, and it was really crazy there. And before the like stay at home thing was put in order, I went ahead and came to Texas, um, not knowing how serious this was all going to get. And so now I've actually been quarantined here in Texas with my family. I have a really large family, but um, I'm quarantining with just my parents and then my brother. And we're quarantining ourselves from the rest of the family because they all have children and, yeah. you know, we don't want to just chance anything. We have old people as well in our family. So we're just staying here together. Um, and honestly, my parents, the way that they live their life is pretty awesome because they meal prep all their food. They have a full <laughs> gym. I'm not going to lie. The full gym is at the house and it's private and it's ours. Um, so I'm so jealous. I'm I know I'm beyond blessed, beyond belief for just the setup that we have here right now. I'm in my dad's office, which is also at the house. So it really just, I'm, I'm really blessed to be having all of this, you know, at my fingertips. Uh, and for me, I do my business online. So as far as like business wise, things really haven't changed for me. If anything, I've actually been working more. Um, and I'm really thankful for that opportunity because I know that not everybody has that opportunity. But my, my mindset with it is if you have been blessed enough to have that opportunity, then you have to kill it. Like you have to take advantage of that and you have to show up the best that you can possibly be for the people that can't. You know, and in my yeah. eyes, it's like, if you have that opportunity, you have to fully seize it because other people would kill to have that opportunity. So I think it's something that we can't sleep on. So overall, I'm doing great. Um, we're staying healthy. We're staying here as a family and uh, just, you know, getting through one day at a time. I won't paint it as it's been perfect because the truth is I've had a few hard days and I've actually you know, been hard on myself about having a hard day because I'm in such a great position. Oh, no. You know what I mean? uh, okay, I can yeah. understand. Sure, yeah. Yeah, because it, it's almost like you, you're not allowed to have a hard day because you, you're blessed. You have a job. You have a gym, you know, and I think it's just, um, it, it comes, comes in waves, you know. Not every day can be a good day, and you have to learn, like, when a harder day comes, how to kind of, like, shift your mindset and realize it's okay that not every day is ideal. You just have to get through that day the best way that you can and operate within the off day, you know, because everyone has an off day. So you have to yeah. allow yourself grace within that. So that's something that I've just been working on throughout this little time. That's such a good point. And regardless of where someone is in life or f physically, geographically, where they are watching this right now, um, there, there has to be a thing, if not multiple things that can be an opportunity that, that is positive. And yes. what I think you're kind of describing is, you know, maybe, um, what I've come to know as, you know, what's called, you know, survivor's remorse, you know, my, my time in the military, I knew people that, you know, didn't make it back or didn't make it back with certain abilities. Um, May, my wife right now, for people who don't know, you know, she's a nurse, but she's in school finishing up her nurse practitioner degree. She's not working. And like her career, her colleagues, they're out there on the front lines right now. And she has a little bit of this guilt of like, I'm supposed to be helping people. But I'm just like, no, not not yet. You know, you need to like square yourself away now to you better help them in just a couple months. Um, is that kind of what you're experiencing? You know, can you describe the struggle a little bit more and where, where can someone go to really look for like what they do have and how they can contribute, and create opportunities? I think the first step is just being really aware and being self-aware to where you're currently at and what is in your hand right now. 
So I think we all have a different card of hands at, you know, in our hands right now. Mm -hmm. We just have to assess like what is currently, what is currently in my deck of cards and how can I do the best within that given framework? So maybe someone's watching right now and they, you know, don't have a job right now and they've been laid off temporarily. And so in their mind now, because they're laid off, they are not exercising, not going for walks. They're eating crap, junk food all the time. They are, you know, not sticking to a routine and it's almost like they allow that one area of their life to defocus them in all these other areas of their life and it's almost a form of self-sabotage and so my mindset with it is you know these harsh realities that we're facing of whether it be sickness or job loss or whatever it is it's a real thing and you have to you have to you know go through it and you have every right to be upset and experience all these real feelings that we're all having but i think at a certain point you have to say okay like i have i've grieved it i've felt it you know but now how can i make the best out of this circumstance what does that look like maybe it looks like you might not have a job but maybe you've always wanted to read personal development books or maybe Maybe you've wanted to work on yourself in some way. Maybe you have issues from the past that you haven't really ever had time to deal with. And now you have the opportunity to journal your thoughts out, to journal what happened in your past. And, you know, to get those feelings and thoughts out on paper because, you know, I found for myself, anytime I've gone on any sort of like personal development journey, um, sometimes when you have a lot going on in your head or you have issues that are unresolved in your heart, in your mind, mm -hmm. Sometimes it just takes putting those issues on paper to all of a sudden gain clarity and perspective. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can't afford a therapist. Maybe you can't afford someone like that to work through, through those things. Um, thankfully, right now, I think people are showing up more than ever on social media. So you actually have, you have access to experts in whatever it is that you need. Often like right here, right now, today. Like, like you. this yeah. whole thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's just crazy. It's like the opportunity that we have is incredible. You just have to have eyes that are open to seeing the opportunity and not let the real life circumstances that can be very hard, you can't let that destroy you. You can't let it crush you. You know, and I think... Yeah. One of the things that we can do to prevent that is be really, really careful about what we're allowing to come into our minds, come into our hearts and, you know, be really hyper aware of our thoughts. So I saw um, on, it was another interview and someone said, you can get all the news that you need within about 20 minutes of watching the news. If so that. If, if that, <laughs> yeah. exactly. So it's like, honestly, the news should not be on all day long, you know, and it's just, it's being hyper aware to how certain things make you feel, how certain things make you think. And even being hyper aware, sometimes it's not outside sources. Sometimes it's our own minds that are the, our worst critics. The other, I'm not going to lie, this was one of my hard days. The other day I found myself going throughout my day and it was one of the harder days for myself and I was doing everything that I could to make it better. And I realized, I was like, wait, what are the thoughts that are going on in my mind right now? And I realized it was pointing out every single thing that I wasn't doing and it was pointing oh. out every single thing that I was doing wrong. And I was like, hold on, am I doing anything right? Let me check. <laughs> and so I ever put pen to paper and at the top of put, Emily, you were doing these things great. And I yeah. pretended that I was an employee of mine because anytime that I work with somebody, I try to always call out what they're doing great. And I always try to really acknowledge that. So I was like, I need to do that for myself. So I wrote That's out incredible. a whole list. And then at the end, I wrote, I'm sorry for being an a-hole. Love, Emily. <laughs> you know, and it, it was just like a little note to myself, but it just like, It's me. not you, it's me. <laughs> yeah, totally. I was like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> you know, and I took responsibility for that. But I think yeah. it's a great exercise that everyone could do because, like I said, sometimes it's not the news and it's not, you know, all these other outside sources. Sometimes it's your own thought patterns. Mm -hmm. And I think there is such a battle for our thoughts because your thoughts and what you focus on, you create more of. And those thoughts mm -hmm. can become your reality. So you have to check yourself and say, am I producing really good thoughts in my head and my mind and my heart that are going to produce the life that I want to live? Or are these thoughts holding me back from the life that I want to live? I agree. I agree. Absolutely. And you were saying a key word there that um, just because I know you, um, producing results, producing results. You are very results oriented. You're very determined person like over the years i've seen you just when you set a goal it's like not i'm probably going to do it or partially going to do it but you yeah. like crush it um yeah. and like right now i know a big part of your goal and goals is you know still in the competitive bodybuilding world physique uh, bikini right excuse me yes. bikini. IFBB, IFBB bikini and you're going for olympia yeah. and so when you have a really tenacious goal um mm -hmm. like that 
and like someone right now watching who was maybe they're right on the cusp of like this big business deal going through or just, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, this maybe COVID-19 ruined like what I had going for me. How do you still stay true to that big goal and not let something like this or any other stressful event that will eventually come down the line? Like, how do you not let that derail you from your like tenacity really on these goals? I think that's a really great question. And I think um, sometimes people can interpret my drive, my determination, even my confidence. Sometimes they can interpret it different and they think that um, they have a different view on it. So I want to talk about this because my confidence doesn't come from the fact that I think that I can control things or I think that I'm going to win all the time or that I think any of those things. My confidence comes in my consistency, my dedication, and my knowing of my end result. I know what my end result is and I have full peace in the surrender of the moment. So that's something I've really had to learn in my life is surrendering control because the truth is we do not have control and it, it takes a worldwide pandemic to really show us that. I think it can just show us that in all areas of life, whether or not there is a pandemic or something else going on whether you have a business deal that all of a sudden doesn't go through it's it you can't let it crush you you just have to understand things happen for a reason there's a lot that's out of our control and as long as you stay consistent and dedicated over a very long period of time through the ups and downs you will get to your end result and that's just something that I've learned in my life through experience so when this all happened I know there's a lot of people that were really thrown off and especially in the competitive world um, I just I saw it a little differently I was just like okay and I just see it with this like curiosity kind of attitude of like, what is this all for? And I like immediately just get curious. That's a powerful question. That's a powerful perspective. Yeah. Well, wow. yeah, yeah. It's just, it's, it's interesting to me. Not why me, why me, but no. why did this happen? What is this yeah. for? Yeah. And, and I even ask, I ask, I'm, I'm huge on asking big questions. So I yeah. ask like, what is this for? What am I learning in this moment? What is this season supposed to mean for me? So even for me right now, like I just constantly am questioning those things and I'm seeking out those higher questions and I'm doing the work. I'm reading, you know, books and diving into my spirituality and diving into all the things that I know make me my best self. I'm deep, diving deeper into those things because I, I kind of see this, this little time period as my own personal boot camp. I don't know why mm. it's happening. I, I know that, man, I've, I've known personal. That's people. awesome. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah. I, I see yeah. it as like I'm being given this opportunity to be in a boot camp. And here's the thing. That reality is not everyone's reality. There are people that are dealing with death right now. They're dealing with all these other things. And so I know that that's not everyone's reality. But I think that what we can do is say, okay, what is my position? Mm -hmm. And how, how can I grow through this? How can I dive deep through this? What are, what are things that I've been telling myself that I don't have time to do or that I don't have time to look back on. You know, I just think it's such, I think we're being isolated for a reason because when you're isolated, you don't have the distractions of the world, of other people, of everything grabbing for your attention. And instead you have the time to actually dive deep and go inside. I think every single person has something so beautiful to offer the world. Mm -hmm. And I think that sometimes we get so caught up in our routine and our Monday through Friday routine. And then Saturday, Sunday, got to relax and get ready for the week. And we do that over and over and over again and people yeah. sometimes just haven't had the space to sit down with themselves and say do they i haven't made the space it? yeah or they haven't yeah. cracked they haven't made the space and so they've never even asked themselves questions of do i enjoy what i'm doing do i feel fulfilled in what i'm doing am i making an impact on other people is this where i really want to be in life what do I want in life? What have I learned from previous relationships that did not go as planned? You know, mm -hmm. what do I know about myself and what do I want in an upcoming partner? I think um, there's a lot of just, just so many different aspects of life that we could dive into right now. And like I said, there are so many experts available to you right now more than ever. And so I think if you were just to do a simple search on Instagram, on podcasting, on whatever it is, yeah. if you're someone that needs to focus on um, trauma from your past. Go and listen to every single trauma you know, podcast episode that teaches you about how to deal with those things. If you're someone that has always wanted to start a business, there's never been a better time to consume all of the free business podcasts and free Instagram yeah. lives. And, Get your you know, learn on, everybody. Yeah, Get your learn on exactly. hard right now. Exactly. So I just think that it's, it's a really incredible opportunity to grow or um, to just dive deep and work on some things that everyone has been needing the time to work on. Yeah. It's funny you use the term boot camp. Um, I actually, 
right at the beginning when all this happened, I, I think I, I, yeah, I tweeted, I was like, I've been through this before. I've, I've been through quarantine before. Uh, it was three months long. All I did was body weight exercises and oh talk my to my family like twice. Uh, it was called boot camp. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I didn't think about that. <laughs> so, I was, That's so you true. know, I don't have people yelling at me all the time. Like, you know, like actually during military boot camp. You're like, this like, is great. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I love that. That's a great concept of just, okay, maybe this isn't the boot camp we, you know, we didn't sign up for the military, but look, we are in a boot camp of the soul of the mind of, of a lot yeah. of things right now. So just accept it because look, this is not in anyone's control. And so and if you try not to have control over that, I think you'll realize a lot more things like yourself and your day and your practice and your mindset actually is in your control. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's huge. Like showing, showing people, these are the things that are in your control. And also I want to um, bring, bring out that not everyone's boot camp is going to look the same. So Absolutely, maybe my yeah. boot camp is the fact that I'm training really hard. I am in prep preparation for competitions this year. Um, you know, I'm working more than ever and that kind of thing, but someone else's boot camp who might need to focus on trauma from the past or relationships and things like mm -hmm. that, their boot camp could look like meditation and a nap every single day and journal could finally getting and, be getting you know still. like oh, more like never been quiet yeah. with themselves ever yeah. yes exactly so i know um you know i definitely i think i definitely represent that group of people that um you know driven and motivated and going after these things but i don't want people to blindly see that as like this is the only way it's not right um, this right. is just what's right for me and that's why i think you have to be self-aware to say okay what things you know maybe from my boot camp what things could you do that would be great for you and what things do you need to leave that are not for you um and it's just so personal so i think everyone should see it as like their own personal boot camp um, and they should work on those things that make the most sense for their lives and their past and in their future and where they want to go. Absolutely. Well said. I, I think it's a great way to kind of wrap things up there. I appreciate yeah. your time. And um, it's got to be, well, I'll say, is it nice or are you at the point yet where it's like, I love being with my family. I hate being with my family. <laughs> is it like you know, too many people under one roof at all times? Is it, is it gotten to that point yet? You know what? Usually it is because we have a huge yeah. family, but because we're quarantined from my like 10 nieces and nephews who I love dearly more than anything, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's just us adults. And we actually, we spend time in the morning during coffee for family time. And then honestly, we all do our own thing the whole day. So that's amazing. It's been, it's been great, but I am going a little stir crazy just being in the same little cave all the sure. time. This, <laughs> um, I think that, you know, speaking of, you know, everybody's boot camp is going to be different right now. I think all of us should recognize that wherever you are, yes, we are literally confined to quarters for, you know, to a certain extent. Um, so that in and of itself is a lesson, you know, how, how can you really handle being by yourself and just be handled the parameters of, you know, geographical limitations, because it's a hard check because for a long time, all of us have had the ability to, you know, we can still do it on our phone, hop on virtually go anywhere, but the ability to just, you know, walk somewhere, get an Uber somewhere, fly somewhere. Um, like yeah. a lot of things maybe we took for granted of just what we can do at the drop of a dime, like that's gone. So let's reintroduce some stillness back with ourselves. And especially the people that are very, um, you know, that thrive off of like physical contact or like hugs and things like that. Oh, yeah. Like I see those memes going around, like, who's the first person you're going to hug? And I'm like, <laughs> anyone that walks down the street. <laughs> hey, you, hey, you. <laughs> yeah. I know we don't know each other, but let's, let's do this. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, Emily, I appreciate your time on here. Uh, thanks for kind of sharing this insight on this boot camp experience and everybody getting out of it what they need. Um, yeah, it's awesome. Of course. Thank you so much for having me and thank you for putting this together. I know it's going to be so valuable for everyone watching, myself included. Yeah. And now on to the next speaker, whoever they may be. <laughs> Have a great time, guys. <laughs>